Welcome to another session for uh, Fundamentals of Digital Logic. Today we want to understand the underlying physics uh, behind uh, the computers and how uh, computers operate. So the first most important uh, thing that you're going to do is understanding why a computer is referred to uh, either a digital computer or uh, an analog computer. So uh, when we use the term digital computers, we, we want to refer to a device that performs a sequence of computation, computational steps on data items that have discrete values. And the alternative of that is an analog uh, computer that operates on values that vary on a continuously over time. Um, so the digital uh, computation has the advantage of being very, very precise, or in other words, to say a bit accurate compared to the analog uh, computer. Uh, because digital computers have become both inexpensive and highly reliable, analog computers have been relegated to a few very, very special cases. Uh, the need of reliability arises because of computation can entail a billions of individual steps. If a computer, if a computer misinterprets uh, a value or a single uh, instruction, it is said to fail. Therefore, computers ha are designed for failure rates of much less than one billion. So, uh, the purpose of a digital co co computer is to increase the reliability and uh, uh, of the output of a user. So a brief history of a computer, you can see Abacus relied on humans to move bits to keep track of the sun. Uh, the early 20th century uh, mechanical gears and levers were being used to produce cash registers and add in machines in 1940s. Uh, the early electronic computers were being constructed from vacuum tubes and the invention of the transistors between 1947 and 1950 emerged. And this, is, this changed computing dramatically. Um, the modern digital computers are built from electronic circuits that use transistors. So after the vacuum tubes, we had now the transistors which really improved uh, the computing power of the machine. If you want to understand more about it, uh, just read more about the history of computers and understand more about that. So uh, there's some terms that are used, used in computing which are referred to as the voltage and current. And um, um, when we, we depend uh, most of the time about the physics or the physical phenomena, associated with uh, electricity. So um, engineers use the terms voltage and current to refer to quantifiable uh, properties of electricity. The voltage between two points is measured in volts and represent the potential uh, difference. And the current uh, on the other side is measured in amperes uh, that represent the flow of electricity electrons along the path, e.g. a wire. Uh, a good analogy can be made uh, with water, right? Water is the best example that we can use. Um, voltage uh, corresponds to maybe the water pressure, and the current uh, corresponds to the amount of water uh, uh, flowing through a pipe at any given uh, time. If a tank develops a hole and the water begins to, uh, to flow through the hole, the water pressure will drop and if the current starts flowing through the wire, the voltage will drop. Right? I think that's uh, the best uh, uh, analogy to really understand. So the most important thing to know about electrical voltage is that the voltage can only be measured as the difference between two points, right? Uh, for your information, the measurement is relative, and thus a vo voltmeter is used. 
which is uh, to measure the voltage and always has to pro uh, ha ha has uh, two probability which are um, the meter does not register vol the voltage until both probes have been connected right so you have to check on the two points so electrical engineers use the term ground to refer to the point that is measured to the point of zero voltage um, we can understand a session of digital logic without uh, we cannot understand um, the digital logic without knowing more about voltage and current and uh, we only need to understand how electricity flow uh, through uh, different uh, mediums so we can move on now that you understand um, um, the definition of voltage and current so there's an element that we always refer to as the transistors or something we've um, discussed about so a transistor um, is used to control the flow of electrical current is uh, mostly a semiconductor advice, uh, device so the mechanical the mechanism used to control flow of electrical current is a semiconductor device known as the transistors so um, at the lowest level all digital systems are composed of transistors in particular digital circuit use uh, a form of transistors known as metal oxide semiconductor field effect trans trans transistor so uh, this is the uh, abbreviated as MOSFET right so a miss of MOSFET can be um, uh, can be formed on a um, uh, on a silicon foundation which has the two layers which is p and n type silicon a silicon uh, insulating layer which can be either a glass and a metal for wires that conduct, uh, that connect the transistor to the rest of the circuit uh, so the transistors are used in digital circuit to function as an on and or an on and off button right on and off button uh, which uh, uh, it's noted um, a transistor can be a, in, in either on option or an off uh, option which is operated electronically instead of mechanically right so each transistor has three terminals has three terminals um, that provide connection to the rest of the circuit. The two terminals uh, are source in the brain have a channel between them on which the electrical resistance can be controlled. If, if the resistance is low, the electronic current flows from the source to the drain, and if the resistance is high, no current uh, flows. Okay, so the um, the term the third terminal is also known as the gate the gate controls the resistance in the um, We will see on how switching transistors can be used to build more complex uh, Components that are used to build digital system, but you have to understand about the three uh, parts of our um, Of the transistor the terminals and the gate and uh, we are going to move on uh, well. So uh, the more uh, the MOSFET transistors uh, come in two types. Both are used in digital logics, uh, and we have um, the two types of transistors used in logical circuit. The type are labeled uh, mostly or are referred to as turn on when the gate voltage is positive or turn on when the gate voltage is uh, zero. The two forms are known as complementary and the overall chip technology is all known as uh, the CMOS or, CMOS or complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Um, 
this you're going to uh, the chief advantage of the CMOS arises because the circuits can be diverse that use extremely low power, right? Right. So these are just a summary of what you need to know about the transistors and how they come in two types. One to make sure that it's on and off and all that. So we go next to the logic uh, gates. A transistor has two possible states. Current is uh, flowing or no current is flowing or on and off right so um, the circuits are design, designed using uh, the two valued mathematical system borrowed from the Boren algebra most programmers are familiar with the three uh, basic uh, Boren functions and or and not right if you understand the Borean functions and or and not and uh, these are the possible input and the results of each function the Borean function provide the conceptual basis for a digital hardware more important it's possible to use transistors to construct efficient circuits that implement each of the Borean function um, uh, for example or a good example is uh, when you consider the, no, the boring knot. Typical logic circuit use a positive voltage to represent a boring one and zero voltage to represent a boring zero. Right? Using zero voltage volts to represent zero and a positive voltage to represent one, meaning which means a circuit, meaning that a circuit that computes boring cannot be cannot a uh, knot can be constructed from two transistors. That is the circuit um, will take an in input on one wire, produce an output on another wire, where the output is always the opposite of the input. Is that um, very clear? Uh, when a voltage is placed on the input, the output will be zero, and when the zero voltage is placed on input, the output will be positive. Right? So the, these, uh, if you look here, the typical logic circuit use a voltage to represent zero and to represent a boring zero using a zero voltage to represent zero and a positive voltage to represent one. It means a circuit that computes boring, computes boring not can be constructed from the true transistors. Right? That's the summary. So um, we can move in. You can we can move on with um, 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 understanding about a few concepts that uh, um, are used in the in the logics about the using latches to create a memory. We don't want to go so much deep in um, uh, in understanding uh, the logic of the physics. Because it's not a, these are computer class. It's not uh, a physics class. So a latch is one of the most basic of the sequential circuits. The idea of a latch is straightforward. A latch has an input, uh, uh, has an input and an output. A latch has an extra input called enable line, right? Referred to as an enable. Uh, so in other things that um, just a minute just trying to get a very good example of the whole thing so that you can understand uh, better so uh, a circuit to handle multiple bits is constructed okay fine let me just explain about using latches to create a memory uh, um, anytime you s we discuss about a processor, we have an element of memory which are commonly referred to as registers that serve as the short-term storage units within the CPU. So registers hold values that are used in computation that will be added together. Each register holds multiple bits, uh, most which most computers have either a 32-bit or a 64 bit register. The circuit for a register illustrates an important principle of the digital hardware design. 
Uh, so uh, a circuit to handle multiple bits is constructed by physically replicating a circuit that handles one bit. So a circuit to handle multiple bit is constructed is constructed by physically replicating a circuit that handles one bit. Uh, registers, on the other hand, hold values that are used in computation register that holds multiple bits, and most computers are either a 32-bit or a 64-bit uh, register. That's why you hear someone asking on most of our software is, uh, you ask whether it support, it's supporting a 32-bit or 64 uh, register. So I'm sure that this is an illustration to understand the, the principle behind that. Uh, so, um, uh, which shows um, a four-bit uh, registers can be constructed from one-bit ratches. All right. So, in the figure that we we have here, if the enable lines of all four latches are connected together to to form an enable input for the register. Although the hardware consists of the four independent circuits, the four independent circuits. Connected to a neighbor line means that the four latches act in unison, right? These act in unison, all right? When the neighbor line um, is set to set logical, the logical one, the register accept the four input bits and set the four and set the four outputs accordingly. When the neighbor line becomes zero. The output remain fixed, right? The output uh, becomes fixed. So this is how you explain uh, uh, that. So the register has stored whatever value has was present on its input, and the output will not change until the enable line becomes uh, one again. So the point here is that a register. Uh, of one of the key comp is one of the key components in a processor and is a hardware mechanism that uses batches to store digital values. So uh, this is the explanation of what we've been discussing. Uh, that's the literature. So the next thing that is very, very key, um, if you've understood uh, uh, this process is about the free props and uh, maybe the transition. Um, uh, a flip prop is uh, a flip prop is another circuit in which output depends on the previous input as well as the current output or input. Sorry, there are various forms. One acts exactly like the power switch on a computer. The time it is it, its uh, input becomes one. The flip prop, the flip prop turns uh, the output on, and the second time the input becomes one. The free prop turns the output off. Like a push button, switches to control the power. A free prop does not respond to a continuous input. The input must return to zero before a value one will uh, cause the free prop to change the state. So whenever the input transition from one to zero, the free the free prop changes its output from the current state to the opposite state. Um, I really love explaining or for you just to have a common understanding about uh, how uh, the zeros and that and one. As growing up, you've tried maybe to balance the uh, the bulb, you know, the, the bulb switch or uh, to try balancing to see whether the electricity can the bulb or the bulb can be halfway on one off. I'm sure no one has ever succeeded on that. Because it responds to um, uh, to a sequence of free flop, it is not possible for combination of of the circuit. So a free flop cannot be constructed from a single gate. Something to note. However, <coughs> a free flop can be constructed from a pair of latches. Uh, for you to be in a position to understand uh, better, a free prop works um, with the plot of input and output in a graphical form that is indicated uh, uh, here on this uh, diagram. So, um, 
that's how it is uh, explained uh, in a nutshell. So this illustration of the transition uh, diagram that uh, shows how free flow reacts to a series of input marks the um, and the exercise indicator um, indicate the times each corresponds to the one clock tick. Uh, sometimes the free flops include additional input named reset that places the output in a stage zero. Um, in, the, in addition to several other variants of free flop that exist, right? So, um, if you understand that, that process, uh, we go to uh, something that is very, very important, which is referred to as, <clears throat> as the binary counters. The binary counters. <clears throat> so a, free, uh, a single free flop only offers two possible output values, which are zero or one. However, a set of uh, free flops cannot be connected in a series to form a binary counter and accumulates um, numerical total. Like a free flop, um, a counter has a single input unlike uh, <clears throat> unlike the free form however a counter has multiple um, output and uh, the output account <clears throat> the output count how many input passes have been detected by giving a numerical total in a binary right so we think of the output as the starting at the zero and adding one to each time the input transition from 0 to 1. A counter that has three output lines can accumulate a total between 0 uh, to 7, right? So what you're talking or what I'm trying to explain is uh, this one. So uh, <clears throat> we have the binary counter here. So uh, this is an illustration of a binary counter here and the sequence of input values and the corresponding output. Uh, the column labeled uh, uh, decimal give the dis, uh, decimal gives the decimal equivalent of the outputs, right? Um, um, in the real life or in an in practice, an electronic part that implements a binary counter has several additional features. Uh, E.g., a, a counter has additional input used to reset the count. Uh, to zero and may may have input that temporarily stops the counter. Uh, more importantly, because it has a fixed number of output, each counter has a maximum value it can represent when the accumulation count exceeds the maximum value. The counter resets the output to zero and uses the additional output and indicates that a flow overflow has occurred. Right. So, uh, if you understand about the uh, the binary uh, the binary counters, that's a summary about from the free flops binary counter. So we go to the clock clocks and the sequ sequences. Uh, so um, we have seen the basic building block of digital logic. One additional feature is absolutely it's absolutely essential for a digital computer automatic operation that is a computer must be able to execute a sequence of instruction without any uh, input changing so the digital logic circuit uh, discussed previously all use the property that they respond to changes in one of one of their inputs they do not perform any function until an input changes uh, so how can a digital logic perform a series of steps without uh, maybe a human intervention. Um, the answer is very simple and it's something referred to as a clock. So, um, which allow, a clock allows uh, the hardware to take action without requiring an input to change. In fact, most digital logic circuits are used to be uh, clocked, which means that, they, that the clock signal, they use the clock signal 
rather than the changes in input controls and synchronize the operation of individual components and uh, ensure that they work together in an intended way right so that's a very good explanation or an overview of what is a clock so what is a clock it's a uh, it refers to an electronics that that circuit that oscillates at a regular rate the oscillation are converted to a sequence of alternating ones and zeros right so um although a clock can be created from an inverter most clock use uh, quartz crystal which is the oscillation oscillation that is natural to provide a signal to a precise frequency right so it is difficult for any human to imagine circuit changing at a such high rate to make it clear clock is available that operates extremely slow at maybe uh, one hertz so the speed of a clock is measured by hertz the number of times per second the clock uh, cycles through the one followed by a zero i think that's a bit clear so a computer must perform the following sequence of steps or how does the alternative sequence of zeros and that you make the circuits more powerful to understand you will consider um, the below uh, how a computer starts so you can see the first procedure is the you test the, the battery power on uh, power on self test of the memory start the disk spinning power above the screen read the boot sector and then you start the CPU to simplify the explanation we need to assume that each step requires uh, one second to complete before the next one can start uh, thus we desire circuit that one it has been started will perform the six steps in a sequence at one second intervals with no further changes uh, for now we will focus on the essence of the circuit and consider how it can be started a circuit uh, to handle the task of performing six steps in a sequence can be built from three building block we have um, um, we have the three building blocks right so these are the three building blocks. we have the clock we have the binary counter and we have the decoder or multiplexer all right so uh, a binary counter and a device known as the which is uh, abbreviated at the max we have already considered a counter and we'll assume that the clock is available that generates digital output at a rate exactly one cycle per second all right so uh, and there's some, some a decoder is very very necessary to um, to do the whole process so uh, this is uh, how the whole uh, illustration of how a clock can be used to create a circuit a circuit that performs a sequence of the six steps output lines from the counter collect that that connect directly to the input uh, lines right uh, something to note is for you to understand how the circuit operates assume that the counter has been reset or two to zero right or when a decoder the device uh, merely selects one input output when used as a uh, as a decoder the div uh, the device takes an extra input which passes to the select output both the decoder functions and more complex uh, the multiplexer function can be constructed from the uh, boring uh, gates right so this is how it is um, um, This is how the six steps are multiplied are, are represented. So uh, the next thing is um, just to understand about the circuit size and more slow for you to understand a little bit. 
So the Kudo, the, the Kudo Mall, the co-founder of entire corporation, is attributed with having observed that the, the density of silicon circuit measured in the number of transistors per square inch would double every year. So the observation known as Mall's law was revised in 1970 when the age slowed to building, uh, doubling every 18 months. So as the number of transistors on a single chip increased, the vendors took advantage of the capability to add more and more functionality. Some vendors created a multi-core CPU chip by replacing the multiple copies of their CPU called the core um, uh, on a single chip and providing interconnection of the of the core. So um, to so the Integrated circuit can be divided into four categories. So this is the we have the small scale uh, integration integration integration. We have the medium scale integration and uh, large scale integration, and we have the VL SI a very large integra integrated integrated uh, 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 circuit. So this is. Um, I see uh, the integrated circuit are often created by using the complementary uh, metal oxide semiconductor technology. The silicon is duped with impurities to give it negative or positive uh, ionization, right? So the resulting substance are known as the N-type silicon or the P-type silicon. Um, the P-type silicon, uh, when arranged in layers, the uh, N-type and P-type silicon for the transistors. So uh, something to note is the uh, IC manufacturers do not create single ICs at any given time. Instead, um, the manufacturers create the wafer that is between 12 and 18 inches diameter uh, that contain many co copies of the IC design. So, um, uh, when you look more about the Moore's law, you're going to find about different levels of abstraction, which we'll be discussing about uh, the circuit boards, uh, the processor, the VLDS chips, the gate, the transistor, and in that. So to summarize whatever I've just mentioned today is um, uh, digital logic refers to the pieces of hardware used to construct digital systems, such as a computer. As we have seen, the Borina algebra is an important tool in digital circuits uh, design. Uh, there is a direct relationship between boring functions and the gates used to implement the combinational digital circuits. We have also seen the boring logic values that can be described using the true tables. A clock is a mechanism that, uh, that emits pulses at a regular intervals to form a signal of alternating ones and zeros. A clock uh, allows the digital circuit output to be function of, of or function of time as well as the logic input. A clock can be used to provide synchronization among multiple parts of the circuits. Although we think digital uh, logic uh, of from a mathematical point of view, building practical circuits involve understanding the underlying hardware details, in particular. Uh, the basic correctness engineers must be content with the problem of distribution and clock scale. So, um, thank you uh, for listening to me. Um, see you in the next class.